Welcome back to our last uh, video on limits. So in this example, we're just going to do a couple of examples. Uh, so let's try a few. How about um, suppose that uh, 1 is less than or equal to g of x is less than or equal to sine of x squared plus 1. Um, for x approximately equal to zero, then can we compute the limit as x approaches zero of g of x? Well, uh, as you might guess, this is all set up for which theorem? The squeeze theorem. So the squeeze theorem says that you can go ahead and just pull down the limits of each of these. g of x. So this would be sine of x squared plus 1. Good. So this limit we know is 1, and that's the limit as x approaches 0 of g of x. And then this limit, uh, well, a sine is a nice function, so you can just plug the 0 in. Sine of 0 is equal to 0. And so this, this limit then is just going to be 1, <clears throat> and there you go. The limit as x approaches 0 of g of x is stuck between 1 and 1. Therefore, the limit is 1. And that's by, by the squeeze theorem. Good. All right. Um, so again, when you're using the squeeze theorem, I think probably the hardest thing is to come up with the upper and lower functions. So this one was kind of easy because it was given. Uh, typically, uh, the thing you want to remember about uh, like a hint for squeeze is that both the sine of anything and the cosine of anything are stuck between two numbers, minus one and one, minus one and one, right? And so these will typically give you your upper function and your lower function, as long as you know the, the limit of the other function that's probably there. Okay, that's kind of mysterious, but I guess I could give an example. Uh, maybe. How about something like <laughs> the limit as God, the squeech, squeaky chair is driving me crazy. Uh, I'm sitting on it all day long too. X squared <laughs> times the sine of uh, oh, uh, pi over x maybe. And you see here, remember, the sine of anything is stuck between minus 1 and 1. And so this function right here, the square root of x cubed plus x squared sine of pi over x is stuck between plus the square root of x cubed plus x squared and minus the square root of x cubed plus x squared, right? So that's part, that's kind of the first part of the squeeze theorem is you've got the upper and lower functions. The second part of the squeeze theorem is that these two limits better be the same. So as x goes to zero, this function goes to zero, this function goes to zero. Therefore, we can conclude that this function also goes to zero, and that is by the squeeze. By squeeze. Good. Oh, you shouldn't be as cryptic as I am when you're writing up your solutions. <laughs> okay. Let's try another problem, maybe. Um, how about one last one? Um, let me pause this for a second. All right, let's just try a few. I'm just going to write down uh, some problems, and we'll try to see if we can get the limit. The limit as x approaches 4 of uh, 18 pi squared. Now 
Did you get 18 pi squared? So that's a quick one. How about the limit? As x approaches 1 of uh, the square root of 5x plus 6 divided by x plus 2. Okay, did you notice that you can just put 1 in? And so if we just put 1 in, we get uh, 6 plus 5 is the square root of 11 divided by 2 plus 1 is 3. Easy. These are easy. Uh, you're ready for a harder one now. Limit as x approaches 3 of the square root of 3x plus 16 minus 5 divided by x minus 3. <laughs> Notice that if I plug in 3, I get 9 plus 16 is 25, so that's going to be the square root of 25, which is 5 minus 5 is 0, divided by 0. So this is a 0 over 0 form. And so I'm going to multiply that by a conjugate. Oh, I'm kind of sitting funny here. 3x plus 16 minus 5. Ah. <laughs> And I'm going to multiply by the conjugate and see what happens. Sometimes you got to try things out just to see if it'll work. And with any luck, it won't take you too long to figure out what's going on. Um, oops, what did I do? I just skipped a step. <laughs> okay, uh, so now I'm ready. So the numerator remember, is going to be that a minus b times a plus b equals a squared plus b squared, or a squared minus b squared, sorry. Okay, uh, so that's going to be 3x plus 16 minus 25 divided by x minus 3 times the square root of 3x plus 16 plus 5. Good. And I think... Let's see, what's 16 minus 25? Is that minus 9? 3x minus 9 divided by x minus 3 times our square root of 3x plus 16 plus 5. <laughs> you see what we're going to do? Factor the 3 out of the top. Cancel the x minus 3s. Yay! And we're done. We have 3 divided by the square root of 16 plus 9 is 25, plus 5 is 3 over 10. Good. All right. Well, gosh, we went through a lot of problems here. I think you're ready for the exercises. I'll see you later.